I'm going to show you how to solve equations using the trial and improvement method. You may have heard of trial and improvement or certainly um, trial and error, um, but we like to call it trial and improvement. It's a bit more positive. Um, so we use this method when we're solving more difficult equations or when the answer might not be a whole number, for example. Um, if you just think back to when you were solving equations using your algebra skills, then you might have solved an equation like this. So we've got 9x plus 27 equals 234. And we would start by removing the 27. Remember using inverse operations. So 20, take away 27 from both sides. And that would leave just 9x on that side. And take 27 away from that. That would leave 207. And then to get the x, we would divide by 9, because that's multiplied by 9, so we use inverse operations again. And that would leave us with 9 divided 9 is 1. So 207 divided 9, so 9 into 2, 9 into 20 is 2. 2 9s are 18, so that's 2 left over. And 9 into 27 is 3. So x is 23. That's solving using your inverse operations but you're not allowed to use that when you're doing trial and improvement if the question says use trial and improvement you must use this method because you get marks for showing the method now setting out is the key to this and the best way to do it is to draw a table you're going to need your calculator ready because we've got a few calculations to do and the first example i'm going to have a look at is this one Solve using trial and improvement 14x plus 73 equals 318. So you can see it's a bit more difficult. And what we're going to do is set out a table first. You want three columns. Your first column is the value of x. These are the values we're going to try in our trials. Your next column will be the value of this part of the equation the left hand side so 14x plus 73 and we're going to make this column quite large because we're going to have to do all our working out here and we'll have a th small third column which will be our result of our trials okay so um the best way to start well we do a little bit of mental maths to start let's have a look we take values of x we need 14 times something and then add 73 and that gives us 318 so let's say 10 well 14 times 10 would be 140 and then plus 73 we need to go a bit bigger so let's try 20 i'll start with 20. now then if x is 20 we've got 14 times 20 and then we have to add 73. now we work that out on the calculator 14 times 20 add 73 and that gives us 353 now that answer is a bit too big so let's put that in our final column too big so we're going to have to choose something smaller if i just draw a number line down the bottom here it will help us visualize where we're going so 20 was too big so let's put that up here 20 is too big so we've got to have something a bit lower than 20 well, what might we try next? Well, it's not much smaller. Let's try um, 16. 16 is a bit smaller. So this time X is 16. So we're going to have 14 times 16 plus 73. Let's work out what that is. 14 times 16 plus 73 equals 297. Now that answer is a bit too small. So let's put that in our result. Too small and 16 was too small so that's at the end of our number line here so we know that our answer lies between 16 and 20 somewhere well what should we try next well halfway between is probably best that would be 18 so if x is 18 we're going to try 14 times 18 plus 73 equals Let's try that. 14 times 18 plus 73 equals 325. 
we're getting closer but we're still a bit too big so a little bit too big so we need to go a bit smaller so 18 is too big so it's going to be between these two points well let's try 17 14 times 17 plus 73 is 14 times 17 plus 73 is 311 even closer but we're still now a little bit too small so 17 is there on our number line we're a bit too small so it's in between 17 and 18 what number is between 17 and 18 well that will be 17.5 so hopefully this should work 14 times 17.5 plus 73 14 times 17.5 plus 73 equals 318 and we're correct now then what's our answer we've done lots of workings out to get all our marks what's our answer be careful don't put this as our answer there's our answer we're trying to find out what the value of x was so at the end you can just write x equals 17.5 let's try another one the equations get a bit more difficult as you'll see here solve using trial and improvement 2x squared minus 85 equals 1963 well just like we did before we're going to set out a table so we'll have value of x as our first column our main column where all our workings out is going to be will be value of now 2x squared one thing you have to remember is to use bod mass so we need to do the power before we do the multiply it's sometimes useful if we just write that in so we don't get confused it's 2 times x squared so we're going to have to square it first before we double it take away 85 and then our final column will be the result we get again a little bit of mental math to work out where we're going to start well what's 10 squared we can do that 10 squared is 100 if we times it by 2 we'll get 200 well, we're not going to be anywhere near 1963 so let's go bigger 20 squared 20 squared is 400 two 400s are 800 that's not close enough let's try 30 squared 30 squared is 900 2 times 900 1800 we're getting closer let's start there so our value of x can be 30 so 2 times 30 squared take away 85 let's try that on our calculator 2 times 30 squared take away 85 gives us 1715 it's a bit too small we need to go a bit bigger so let's try something a little bigger let's try 33 2 times 33 squared take away 85 and that is going to be equal to take away 85 2093 well, that's a bit too big now so we need to choose something smaller not much smaller though so let's go 32 2 times 32 squared take away 85 2 times 32 squared take away 85 1963 and we've got the answer which is our answer not that one remember the value of x x equals 32 and the most difficult of all is when you don't have x as a whole number so the third example here we have to solve using trial and improvement x squared plus x 
is equal to 165. Give your answer to one decimal place. Now that's given us a clue that it's not going to be an exact answer. So we set up our table again, value of x, and the middle column, which is where all our workings out is going to be, is this left hand side, remember, so value of x squared plus x. And our final column is the result we get. So let's have our three columns. And we can start by thinking about what value we can start with. Well, we're going to square a number here and we need to add it on again and get 165. What number do we know that we can square to get close to this? Well, we know 10 squared is 100. And we should know that 12 squared is 144. Let's try that because we should get pretty close using 12. So if our value of x is 12, we'll have 12 squared plus 12. And what's that equal to? 12 squared plus 12 is 156. We're a bit too small. Let's show this on our number line at the bottom to help us visualize where we're going. So 12 was too small, so let's put 12 there. Too small, we need to go higher a bit. Let's try now 13. 13 squared plus, now be careful here, plus the same number again. So 13 squared plus 13 equals 13 squared plus 13 equals 182. We're a bit too big there. We want 165. Now, 13 was too big, so we'll have that number at our upper end. So we know it's going to be somewhere between those two numbers. What number is between 12 and 13? We're now going to have to go into decimals 12.5. So 12.5 squared plus 12.5 is equal to 168.75 not far away but we're a bit too big 12.5 was a bit too big so we know we've got to come a bit smaller it's between these two numbers now 12 and 12.5 it's not much smaller, so let's try 12.4. 12 12.4 squared plus 12.4, that gives us, plus 12.4, that gives us 166.16. Again, slightly too big. 12.4 was there. It's slightly too big. So we still know it's between 12 and 12.4. We're very close here. Let's try 12.3. 12.3 squared plus 12.3 is equal to 12.3 squared plus 12.3 is equal to 163.59. Now that's too small. So 12.3 was too small. So we know it's somewhere between 12.3 and 12.4. Now the question only wanted us to work to one decimal place. So which one is it? Is it 12.3 or 12.4? If we look at our answers, we can see that 166.16, that's one and a bit away. And this 163.59 is also one and a bit away. But we have to be a bit more mathematical than that. The best thing to do is to do what's called our check. And this will get an, a, a mark for us on its own if we get this right. The check, we need to find out what is halfway between those two numbers. Well, halfway between 12.3 and 12.4, we need to go to the second decimal place. It's going to be 12.35. So we try that one. 12.35 squared plus 12.35 is equal to, 
we'll use our calculator for that plus 12.35 is equal to 164.8725 well we're after 165 we're close but that answer is still a little bit too small so in the middle there 12.35 it was too small now if our check is too small that means we're going to go up to the next one up to 12.4 and that is the answer we will use because we're working to one decimal place even though this 12.35 is a better answer the question only wants one decimal place so we use this check to decide which one to use is it 12.3 or 12.4 the check is too small so we go up to the next answer which is 12.4 put in brackets we've worked to one decimal place trial and improvement